All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how we framed and then put together this three-tiered deck using the Trex composite decking. Uh, and we also did a picture frame border that you can see there, and we added on these really cool LED lights, framed it all out around a hot tub. So I'm going to show you every step of the way, but first we're going to jump inside SketchUp and go over the model. All right, so here we are in SketchUp. And, and uh, just as a little disclaimer here, I use SketchUp to model, uh, and that's it. So this isn't going to be a, a tutorial on how to use SketchUp, but uh, just to, to kind of show you the, the layout, I often use it just to kind of lay things out and get my my thoughts kind of jotted down here. Instead of using paper, I'll actually use this, and I can come within a sixteenth of an inch, so I'm pretty darn accurate with it. Uh, but as you see, I'm coming out of back, basically our back patio, and this is the travertine. Uh, deck that is right there, fireplace, and the two-seater post. But then over on the right, we had this section that um, is 13 by 2 by 15. This is 15 feet long right here. And so I had this little space to where we wanted to uh, put, this is basically the breakfast uh, nook area, the breakfast area uh, of the house right off the kitchen. So we wanted to put our, our, our uh, hot tub right there and build something around it. So now let's just use this and we're going to kind of un unlayer it. Um, so let's just unhide some of this and then we'll start showing it all. So let's just take it one layer at a time. Alright, so the very first layer was just the two boxes. So you've got this this box and I'm going to have to see if I can't grab it. Oh, the, the other pointer was working. So here's our first box and here is our other box right there. Before we get there, I had to actually put the post in. So we had to get all the stringers in, in place first, which you'll see in the video. But we had to lay those out. And you're wondering why there's not one right there. Because this is a very long ledger board that's going to be running across at the top level. So not, not this one, not the second one up, but the very top one. And it's basically cantilevered. So you won't actually have to put anything there. This one really is right up against the foundation of the house, which stuck out about 11 inches off of the house. So I'm actually hitting concrete right there on that guy. This one's in the ground. Everything else is in the ground uh, two feet deep. So here's uh, basically how it's laid out. So you can see I put the boards in here that you'll see in, uh, for support when we're doing the picture frame border. But that's how that is laid out, the two, um, two boxes. And then let's show the next level. We'll unhide this guy right here. Whoops. Turn that off. Now we can see it. And basically that's our next level and how it's framed out. So you can look at it a couple different ways. And I'm including on there the fascia board that goes on. And that, that was just my idea of, of like where the lights are. Let's see if we can't get rid of this darn thing. Hide that. We'll hide that. Whoops. Let's unlock. I'll we'll hide this. Now we can, now we can spin around freely and look at it. But yeah, that's basically how it is. There were two other little boards put in right there for uh, where the miter cuts are coming in because you got one coming this way and the other one coming that way. Uh, but that's it. And then our blocking on on each end. Let's show now the top level. And let's see if I can get this to show up. Unhide. There we go. So now there's our top level. And I had to put this all the way in so we had something to anchor onto when we did the picture frame border. Going this direction was quite all right, but going this direction, we definitely needed to have blocking in place so that we could uh, screw into. Everything here had joist hangers, so the top level, we didn't need joist hangers here because you can see everything lines up with the bottom one which is sitting on supports so you don't need it there but up here you definitely had to have joist hangers on on all these joists and we just use Simpson joist hangers which is just fine uh, let's take a look now at what it looks like putting the actual tops on let's see if I can spin around yeah and so that basically showed me what it was going to look like and then this is obviously the hot tub, so we'll unhide that with it in place. So now we'll uh, take all those off. There we go. Okay. 
So now you can see actually what it looks like. I didn't put the uh, the lights on this side just to you know spacers. You'll see it on the video. But really, that's a, you know basically what it looks like with with the gapping. I have included the the three sixteenths gapping in there. So when you get in here real tight, you can actually see that it does have that gap uh, in there. On the corners, I did not leave a gap. You had choice on that one. I was above forty five degrees, so I could have put a you know an eighth on there. But you know it's it's going to work out just fine. You don't have to. And uh, I saw several different YouTube videos where they didn't put that gap. But basically, that is how it is laid out. So now, we'll jump out of SketchUp, and we will start the process of how we did it all. All right, first step in the process here was just to clear the ground away, get that top layer of soil out of the way, and mark and lay out where our 4x4 posts were going to go, and uh, start digging holes. Pebble at a time. Should only take us two years to fill it in. All right, so we finally emptied one of the bags down far enough to where you could just grab the tabs and pull it over and uh, tilt it in, and that worked. That little line that you see right there, that little line there, that's actually Windstream's fiber optic cable. Uh, they had no idea that we were putting in a hot tub, and neither did we. So they buried it, and we just got to move it. So they're going to come back out and move it, but it'll be out of the way. You're doing great, honey. Doing great. Thanks, All right, so here we've uh, laid in our 4x4 post. That's going to act as a guide so we can level it. And we dumped two of those large bags into this hole that we dug, which was quite large, about 96 by 96 inches. And uh, now we dump those two bags in and we're just kind of pushing the, the rocks around, getting them level. And you'll see us uh, scrape this thing level like you would do concrete here in just a second. So we just grab a two by four, put it on the uh, four by fours and push the rocks along. And so long as your 4x4 posts that are laying in there are level, now your rock base for the hot tub will be level as well. All right, so once you've established level, you're going to pull out those 4x4s and fill in the troughs and then go back and make sure everything else is level. Once that's done, you're just going to grab your handy dandy tamper and start tamping it down, making it uh, nice and solid. All right, so let's walk through what I've done so far here and get you up to speed. So cleared the ground and uh, got the stringers out. We had to mark, of course, where the poles were going to go because that's one of the more important items is these things have to be on point, absolutely perfect. And so how I did it was I used these little guys out here. I used several of them. There's a stack them I broke but this is what they looked like uh, I used a combination of that and actually weights so I could tie my strings to it and mark off exactly where they were and then what I would do is I would actually mark the line on the line where the next pole would be uh, so I'd have my measurement and then mark the line itself with a sharpie and that would give me my measurement once I got them in uh, of course, you need a helping hand to uh, stabilize them and uh, square them up and uh, make sure that they are balanced out and plumb. Uh, and then just put a little bit of concrete in there, make sure we're still st steady. And then once you get one in, now you can just work off of that with all the rest of the measurements. And, uh, and they came out just right on. It, it took us a little bit, but uh, it came out, you know, they're, they're perfect right now. Um, everything is squared up, 
and the whole box is, is square. Um, and then the next phase was to dig this out. Uh, and that was a giant undertaking. I was lucky enough on the day uh, yesterday uh, that we had to take up all this topsoil. So there was a guy that was here to do another uh, job uh, with my neighbor and he had a bobcat. And so I just went over and asked him and he came over here and no joke in, in less than five minutes, he had this whole square taken out. So I was lucky with that. Otherwise I was gonna have to do it by hand and that was gonna suck. But uh, this was a giant undertaking. We had to do it by hand. So just a bunch of shovels, a bunch of wheelbarrowing, got all the dirt out and we had to dig down uh, basically about four inches, maybe a little bit more than that. Cause we want the tub to sit a little bit lower. You can see over there, um, we're, we're still a good, you know, two, three inches low there. Um, and we put four by fours in, so that's three and a half by three and a half. We put four by fours in so that we could, and leveled those out. So we had, you saw that we had them right here and right here, leveled those out both in both directions. So, uh, left and right and uh, once we had that level and stable now we could come across and we could fill in uh, our hole basically with all of the gravel that we had and we're still short maybe just you know uh, a, a bag or two just small bags small not those big bags small bags um, and then obviously you just rake it just like uh, normal like you're like you're laying you know concrete you're just going to rake it uh, and then tamp it down and now we are level and compact, ready to receive the uh, hot tub whenever it arrives. It's not here yet, obviously. But the next step is the fun part, which we can start framing here pretty soon, as of tomorrow. But we'll let these dry and harden up because they're still a little bit damp, the concrete is. Uh, but I'll be putting on ledger board starting tomorrow. So in this design, I got to compensate for this travertine deck that we have. And, and this corner right here is the highest point in the whole thing. So this is where I'm going to start from. And uh, basically, there's two steps right here uh, on the plans. There'll be a step here, a step here, and then up onto this part where you're going to be uh, onto, you know, basically the, the top deck. So just two steps uh with two by eights so seven and a half uh, step uh, which is exactly what our house is but we're going to start from right here because this coming off of this corner over here is going to be my my step coming right up to that corner right there hanging out about right you know real close to that so that's where i'm going to start is i'm going to put a board across here and get my bottom measurement my bottom line right there and that's where I can start from because from there, everything is seven and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half. You'll see when I get there. All right, you can see, got my mark over there. That's my high side. I'm just gonna raise the board up until my bubble is in the middle, right there. And then I'm gonna make a line Right there. All right, so what I'm doing here is putting in a temporary block that my ledger board can actually rest on. All right, so this is the, really the landing spot for the first step and the foundation for the second step that's gonna go in right here before the main platform for the tub. This was quite some work to make sure that we got it exactly where we needed it to be. Uh, a lot of math going on here. And look at this gap. So what's going to happen is there is going to be a fascia board that sits right in front of that one, obviously. And it's going to cover up that crack right there, transitioning on, uh, from the travertine onto uh, the treks. But boy, when you go down here, and this, this box, this first box is square. So when you go all the way down here, it really starts swinging out. So I'm not sure if if my poles are off by a little bit or if the travertine is off by a little bit, but uh, definitely uh, not square. But uh, that's where we are so far. So now we're going to put the, uh, uh, the infield joist right here in this box and finish up this box. So 
So that end is not tacked in yet because I couldn't. I'm try trying to do this by myself and uh, the board was too far away and I couldn't squeeze this side to that side. So I just got some straps that I had and strapped it down. Now it's touching. Now I can tack it down. so the platform for the first step and support for the second step is in and uh, the way we did it obviously marked 16 inches on center starting from this side right here going that direction and my lovely wife is putting down the uh, weed barrier right now but so we just marked them all and uh, cut all the boards are all the you know exactly the same obviously and uh, put them in place and just tacked them down with the with the framing nailer first and then uh, going back behind it and putting the actual uh, deck screws in. This little section right here is for the picture frame on the tracks. So it's just a nice little support board placed in there uh, and that's going to be able to uh, handle our 45 degree miter cuts in this direction. All right, so we're at the point where I'm putting in the lighting, and you have to do that before you put the uh, treks down. But I uh, found this product that a lot of people, good reviews uh, on this guy right here. And uh, so it comes with 16 lights. They are flush. And uh, that's an inch hole. Um, and they fit nice and tight. It's perfect. Um, so... Uh, Got them all wired right here, and they just kind of connect just like that. So you got to drill a lot of holes because you're going to run your wire, you know, in between. Um, but the spacing, just to give you an idea, uh, I measured the length of that step right there, and then just split it in sixth or six times so to give me five holes that are equal distance. And uh, that gave me something about 33.6, uh, you know, so 33 and a half. So everything is 33 and a half inches apart. And I still have more room if I needed to connect. Now, one thing that you definitely will want to get. Here's the power. So there's our power source right there on the wall. Come on underneath to the transformer. And then you got to get that little guy right there, which is a little dimmer. And so definitely get that because they come out really bright, even though I think they're at like 2700, so pretty, pretty yellow. But then it comes with this handy dandy little remote and uh, just to kind of give you an idea if I don't fall, turn them on. Oh, it's not plugged in. <laughs> Let's plug it, plug it in here. All right, now we're on. And we are going to hit go. Yeah, all on. That's that's 100% right there. You can definitely see it. And I knocked it down to 10%. At night, it matches up with those on the fireplace. So 10% running is really all you need. And then, since this was a little bit more of a span right here, you know, I've got to go around the corner. Um... Well, I had to connect a little bit of my landscaping wire that I had some left over. And so there it is right there. That's four feet of cable, so a little overkill, but whatever. Um, had to run it from right there all the way through the corner to this first one over here. And then you can see those three are installed already. And now my decision was to actually stagger them. I was going to line them up and really and truly it's just dealer's choice on this. If your preference is to line up your, your lights one above the other, uh, then fine. But I just thought it was going to look like a runway. And so I didn't want to do that. What I decided to do was stagger them. So I'm staggering them. That's just painter's tape right there to give me an idea of what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to run them equal in between all the way around onto that one. So now 
I'll show you how we cut these out and uh, we'll do the we'll do the top shelf here. Be sure to get the end with the cap to connect to the other side. That way you have something to screw into it. It'll be obvious. Now I got lucky here. I don't have to actually drill through my joist. I have just enough length in the spacing here to where I can just go underneath. So I got lucky. Everything's gonna be off the ground sealed we're good something to take into account you just saw me drill through the other side I forgot that there was a joist hanger right there and I got very lucky um, didn't even think about it so check your backside as well when you're coming through because uh, if you're up close to a stud especially on these you know cutting through the uh, middle you're gonna have joist hangers uh, so just keep that in mind the rest of them we should be okay on. All right, so our little LED lights here, uh, they come with a little backing. And what I found that worked best was to take this piece off. And it's going to be hard for me to do and show you with the camera, but I'll show you in a second. But the inner piece works perfectly with, that's a one inch diameter hole. So let's pull this off. I'll show it to you. There it is. It's got those little prongies, so it just fills in the gap perfectly sits in perfectly centered and uh, so we'll just take this thing off and we'll slide it right in all right so here we are in the corner and didn't know if i was going to have enough room to go from there to that guy there but i'm literally when i put them close together five inches short so gotta go splice another one all right, so there may be a need to have some extension and this this kit that I got off of Amazon doesn't come with uh, extensions. That would be nice uh, to have about a three foot extension uh, or several of them. But if you don't want to do that and you want to cut some wire, then uh, just use some landscape lighting. This is a uh, landscape lighting that I have on my house. And uh, this just comes from Amazon. It's a hundred feet of it and I'm just, Cut off a little section here that's all I need for the for uh, going across the corner and we're just going to splice it together but uh, you just want to obviously make sure that you keep same side same side on this low voltage cable so you know this little side right there has a little bit of uh, writing on it and so does this one so that's uh, that's what I'm going to do is make sure that the writing side stays with the writing side and all will work out just fine all right, a couple different ways to uh, connect the ends together. You can just use these, but uh, you're not going to want to leave them just like that. You're going to want to go ahead and tape those guys up real good uh, so water can't get inside. Or you could use, uh, I've got a couple of them here, a couple different barrel connectors. Uh, I used it both on the, on the other section that I did. Worked out just fine. Um, so that's actually a little speedier than these even though you just crimp these things on and just tape the ends um, we kind of like the twisties and there we go all hooked in and uh, ready to move on rest of the way i shouldn't have to do this so we should be good to go the rest of the way so another unforeseen issue that i ran into my choice was to or is to put the top row in between the bottom row lights so when we're going along here everything's kind of equal distance and then i'm going to run the same distance but just be in the middle so i didn't want to i didn't want to be lined up i wanted to actually split the middle with that top row of lights all the way around and that was going to work out great and it's just your choice but as i'm getting over here to this guy 
I noticed my hole was right on top of a 4x4 and two 2x8s. So I had to cut through and make a hole all the way through my 4x4, my post. Except, we get over here, I've only got about 10 inches, so my drill wouldn't actually fit in there. So I actually had to angle down and hit the hole and just guesstimate, and I hit it on the first time. And then I had to use a uh, little wire. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, right here, okay. Just had to use a little little wire and you know poke through and then and then pull the cable all the way out you know after tying it on so we got it and then of course i had to actually splice another you know 12 inches of extension on there so but it's all good back to work all right so we got in our first row but we did this on the back side because it was our first time ever doing this so we wanted to if we made any mistakes we wanted it to be back here uh, to where no one would see it hopefully, but uh, there's a the corner. We did learn something right here You need it to start because everything else when you're when you're doing a uh, Composite deck or any kind of deck putting your tops on you're gonna start away from the house and work that way Unless what we found out if you have steps like what we have here We found out that the best thing to do is actually establish this border up against the fascia board first and then work your way out this way that way you end up on the overhang correctly you've got a little room out here that you can that you can uh, play with it's supposed to have three quarters of an inch overhang and uh, but if you don't have exactly that nobody's going to see it so you can screw up okay so the next row we're going to show you how to actually do it so you put some shims in to give you your spacing off the fascia board just like that lay the board in here line it up exactly where you need it to be because you got to account for this side coming in as well so you need to have right where that point is right there you need to come out just a little bit so your next board comes in and marries up with it nicely and then what we're doing down here is we just put a two by four in place we marked where that board comes in went up and just marked a line right there and then just put a, a board in place so we can hold it and then we will be able to cut uh, where we're supposed to be here all the way across and that makes it nice and easy and then we'll just run the rest of them just like that side right there here we go all right another tip go ahead and get your measurements and get the end screwed in that end is screwed in where it needs to be obviously that two by four will get out of here but then you know you put your little black clips in place the hideaway system and just rest them in there or just screw them in just a little bit um, just to hold them upright because the next board's going to come in and you need just a little bit of pressure to hold them in um, and then we'll when you uh, screw them in it'll tighten the board down all right finally we can continue to work so we've gotten the two steps done and now we're starting on the main part of the deck right here. So I just thought I'd show you how to actually put in this picture frame border. So I actually started over here first. Let me see my shadow. And did this board here and got our exact measurement based off of that guy. Same thing, just did a line up and a line over. And uh, put that one in first and then ran everything down here. Now, these square edge boards, these are all square edge. They don't have that groove in there like these interior boards what we'll put inside there so these square edge uh they only come in eight foot so i had to actually have a break right here so there's a little seam right there and of course whenever you're doing this you want to have a seam right on a stud uh, and just split it whenever you're putting uh, your screws in you're just going to split that but one thing that you also have to do is because of the trex clips you want to route out a little bit of a space right there where the clip can go in. And so I've got my router here and I'll just show it to you. That's the little bit that you're going to need. That is a, a groove cutter. Pick that up at Lowe's. That one works perfect. It's set at the exact height that you need it at. It's perfect. 
and uh, real easy to do just put the router in and route out where um, where your clips are going to go now on a brake right here you actually don't need one so you've got the screws that are holding everything in place but everywhere else you're going to have to uh, route out now i only have to do that on this this one that board right there uh actually that whole side because up here we're going to have the boards going long way which i'll show you how to do that in just a second we'll, we'll watch it all and then on once we get up here against the house we'll finish off our miter we'll have our picture frame border going all the way up this way and across and then all of our infield boards will come up against but i will definitely be putting in and i'll probably have to route that side and the interior board where all i have the grooves uh, cut out because that's how they come okay here we go Hey, to give you the correct spacing on the end of the boards, just use a paint stir stick. That'll work great. Let's put it in place and see what it looks like. So another thing you want to do is make sure this is the end that uh, comes from the factory, and it's going to have a tag on it and a staple, but you always want to cut off just about 3 16ths off the end. Now, I don't need to take off 3 16ths. I'm just going to take off about a half a blade on this one, but that'll help you square up. So you always got to do that. So I took that first board that was in here. I was considering making a template, but I was like, wait a minute, what if I'm just off a little bit down here? And I am. I'm more than what I wanted. I only really want about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch is what Trek says. And I'm, you know, half to three quarters right there. So this board, this board works perfectly right here. But as we get farther out and further away, not down here. So I am going to have to uh, do them individually. So it's going to take us a little bit longer. All right, so this board that we're putting in right now is really bowed. Now, I could put it the other way, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and screw these ends down and in and lock them in. And then once I get to the other end, I can bend it myself and it'll bend right in. All right, so let me see it. But the deck screws are color matched. Uh, and this is a uh, toasted sand color with the Trex is its deck and this is a toasted sand uh, T20 Screw deck screw. Okay, so and it's always a good idea to go ahead. I, I've, I've tried just drilling these with uh, without pre-drilling and It, uh, it kind of It heats it up and, it, and really makes it look look bad and the, the Trex kind of like just melts on it so it's better to go ahead and pre-drill uh, pre your holes. The bad part is the clips, the hideaway clips, use a different <laughs> use a different type of head than the deck screw. So you got to constantly be changing them out. So we're going to put this one tight in place. All right, so here's the top. It is finished. 
but let's just talk about it for just a second. You're cruising along and everything's going just fine. And I got lucky. It was an actual whole piece that fit in right there next to the tub exactly how I wanted it. And then I could just continue on maintaining the same width going all the way across until I got to this side. And I didn't get so lucky. So I actually had to measure up and over and then run the rest of the way and actually cut just a small one right up there. I did that with uh, a jig and uh, the table saw because I wanted a nice line. I wanted a nice smooth line all the way across and, and uh, everything after that went uh, just fine. So this, uh, this piece right here is a smaller piece as well as actually you can see. So we had to cut that one down uh, as well so it fit in. But that's what you want to do. As you get closer to the house, you want to run normal all the way across until you get right up next to the house. And that's our border for our picture frame border. But that piece is just a little bit smaller, as you can see. All right, this, this is a special type of uh, fascia board at, at Lowe's. It's an exterior uh, fascia board. Um, and it's seven and a half inches wide. All those guys are. But you put it in with that right there. I don't know if you can see it. Golly. Yeah, that right there. And it's got to look like a little sponge on the end of it. Sorry for jerking you around. But it's got a little sponge on the end of it. And it prevents you from going um, too deep into the wood because there's the that's the the, uh, the screw that goes in deck screw that goes in and then it has these little plugs that go back and you just plug the hole and you can't even tell it's fantastic all right I have to talk through this one right here and I can't get up too close because the Sun will wash me out but that bottom fascia board right down there well there's a slope on uh, our patio here and that's just supposed to sit right on top of the patio and then I can actually put a, a full piece in right there and extend it all the way to the you know the rest of the way here but I had to go through and each of the travertine pieces is eight inches and so I measured all the way up until where, because it sits on top up here, you can actually see it. The fascia board actually sits up on top of the, on the uh, travertine, but doesn't down there. Uh, it actually sits below. So I had to actually figure out what that line is. So every eight inches, I took a measurement from the step, so underneath the step, to right at the uh, level of the travertine and uh, made a mark and then just marked them all. So on the back side of that, I've marked them all, laid it out and then had to jigsaw it. And oh my gosh, it came out absolutely perfect. Complete accidental. I am not that good, but it came out really well. And so now the next piece can go in right there and it's a full piece and we don't have to worry about it. All right, so there you have it. We just went through step-by-step step on how to make this three-tiered deck and frame it out and put treks on top of it and oh my gosh i can't believe if you've made it this far because this was a fairly detailed and lengthy video hopefully you found some benefit from watching this whole entire thing hey if you made it this far though just uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell so uh, you can get some notifications anytime i post a lengthy video i really apologize for it but anyway hey enjoy these last few scenes and we'll see you in the next video